In this lecture, presented by www.free-academy.com, we have an optimization question submitted by one of our users. This is an interesting question. We've been given a piece of metal that's 16 inches wide and an unspecified length. And we need to bend up two sides to create a horizontal gutter that can carry the most amount of water. Now what might not be immediately obvious is we're trying to maximize the area of uh, the cross section of the gutter. And let me show you why that is. Um, this will be a little bit easier to follow if you've taken introductory physics or chemistry and are familiar with unit conversions. But So we're trying to find maximum carrying capacity. So what that's going to be is the greatest amount of volume of water per unit time. So that's going to be some type of volume, say perhaps meters cubed per second. Well actually let's use inches. Inches cubed per second. And you know a volume is cubic. And we're going to assume in this problem that the speed that the water moves down the gutter is going to be a constant. So the rate is a constant. It's not going to change. And the rate is a, you know, well, inches per second. It's a speed. Just got that all messed up. Okay, it's an inch per second. So now if you take the volume flow, which is an n cube per second, and you divide it by the rate, you can cancel out some of these units. You can cancel out one of the inches, you can cancel out the second, and what you end up with is an inch squared. So in other words, an area times a rate gives a volume flow per second. So the larger we make the area of the cross-section of the gutter, uh, the more water can flow down this gutter. And if that doesn't, if the unit's arguments doesn't make sense to you, just think of your extremes on this. What if you have a gutter that has like really tall walls but incredibly narrow base? Is this going to hold a lot of water? Or if the gutter, say, has like almost no walls and is really, really wide. Is that going to hold a lot of water? No. It's going to be something around the middle. You know, this obviously has way more area than this or this, even if they were drawn to scale. So anyways, uh, now that we've come to the point that we need to maximize the area, how do we actually do this? Well, we know we're going to have 16 inches in width, and we don't need the top to the gutter. In fact, you know, that wouldn't be a very good gutter if it did have a top. We only need one, two sides, and a base. So our 16 inches is going to be two times the height of the gutter. This is height plus the base. And this is going to be the equation for the perimeter. You add up the length of the two sides and the base, and it has to equal 16. Well, realistically, it can be less than 16, too, but that wouldn't be very useful. And we need to maximize the area. And area of a rectangle, of course, you know, is base times height. So we've been given two equations, two unknowns. Let's start plugging things together and solving. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the perimeter equation for the base which is going to give base is equal to 2h, sorry, 16 minus 2h. And now I'm going to plug that into the equation for the area. So area is going to be equal h, 16 minus 2h. So area equals 16h minus 2h squared. And something that should be uh, clear if you've done a few of these problems is that it's optimization. We're trying to maximize A. We're trying to find the largest cross-sectional area, maximum. This should imply to you that you are looking for a local maximum. 
in any set range. And when you're finding maximums and minimums, you need to take the derivative and then set it equal to zero. So a prime is equal to 16 minus 4h. Let's set that equal to zero and solve. If you throw 16 to the other side and divide it, it should be pretty clear that h is equal to four. And that's the only point where you get a zero. But we're maximizing on a certain range. There's a limit to how high the height is. The height can't be, say, 400 inches tall because we're limited by this equation here. So if you solve out this equation, you can see that the highest height, if you have a base equal to zero, the highest height you can have is eight. Because 16 equals two h, solve it, you get h equal to eight. And also, you the smallest h you can have is zero. You can't have a negative height here. You know, your units of length are positive. So h is between zero and eight, and you have a critical point occurring at h equals 4. And if you recall from uh, your local minimums and maximums, when you have the range, you need to check all the points in the range. So we need to check h is equal to 0, 4, and 8. Let me clear up a little bit of room here. h is equal to 0, 4, and 8, and we're going to put this into our area equation, base times height. So we get the first case, we have area equals base times h equals 0. I think that's pretty easy to see that that's equal to 0 as well, so that's probably not going to be our maximum. In our second case, where we're going to do h is equal to 8, if you put it into the perimeter equation, 2h plus base, well, equals 16. If this is 2 times 8, that's 16 already. That means base is equal to 0. So if you have area equals 0 times 8, that's also equal to 0. That's probably not our maximum as well. So this just leaves us with the third case, h is equal to 4. Put it in a equals 4 times, and now we need to solve for the base. 16 equals 2 times 4 plus base. This is 8. 16 base is equal to 8. Area is equal to 32. So 32 inches squared is our maximum area from our critical points and our bounds. And that occurs when the height is equal to 4. So to answer the question, how many inches should be turned up on each side? You should turn up 4 on each side, leaving 8 at the base. And that solves our question completely.